Today's episode is about sleep. Why do we do it? Why do we spend so much of our lives in this weird doppelganger state? When you're asleep, it still looks like you, but you are essentially shut off. And even though we're not typically aware of being in this state because we have no sense of the passage of time there, we spend so much of our lives there, more time than you spend doing almost anything else, whether that's eating or showering or being with friends or listening to podcasts. All of those presumably take up a smaller fraction of your life. Sleeping is at the top of your list of activities and certainly at the top of the list of activities that you do consistently. Other hobbies come and go, sleep remains. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about everything you've ever wanted to know about sleep, and we're going to uncover what the brain is really doing during this time. And this is the first part of a three-parter. Next week, we're going to dive into dreams. Why do we dream? What's that about? Is it a form of consciousness? Do all animals dream? And finally, two weeks from now, we'll dive into lucid dreaming, which is where you become consciously aware that you are in a dream state and you are able to take control of the plot. So join me for those episodes. They build on this one about sleep. And I promise you there will be no end of mind-blowing surprises there. So for today's episode, we're going to start in the early morning of May 24th, 1987, when a man named Kenneth Parks is watching TV on the couch and he falls asleep. And he gets up, he drives across the city of Toronto where he lives, and he enters his in-law's home. And there he stabs his mother-in-law to death and attempts to murder his father-in-law as well. And then he drives himself to the police station and turns himself in. Now, Everyone agrees that Kenneth Parks had no motive. He loved his in-laws and he had a close relationship with them. And even more strangely, he appears to have been asleep the whole time. Now, that claim sounded outrageous to most people, especially as Parks had to drive 14 miles to get to his in-laws' home. But as the case was investigated, the sleepwalking story began to take shape. When he arrived at the police station, he had looked down in confusion at his bloodied hands and he said, quote, I think I may have killed some people. He claimed to have no memory of what had happened and he appeared horrified when he learned the details. He testified that he wasn't awake and he wasn't conscious during the crime. And by the way, his testimony never wavered throughout the whole trial. So his legal team argued that the case represented homicidal somnambulism, which is just a fancy way of saying killing while sleepwalking. So electrode recordings in a sleep lab showed that the electrical activity in his brain was highly unusual and consistent with sleepwalking. So I'll quote the expert testimony given by a psychiatrist named Ronald Billings. The lawyer asks, is there any evidence that a person could formulate a plan while they were awake and then in some way ensure that they carried out in their sleep? And Billings says, no, absolutely not. Perhaps the most striking feature of what we know of what goes on in the mind during sleep is that it's very independent of waking mentation in terms of its objectives and so forth. There's a lack of control of directing our minds in sleep compared to wakefulness. In the waking state, of course, we often voluntarily plan things, what we call volition. We decide to do this as opposed to that. And there is no evidence that this occurs during the sleepwalking episode. So the lawyer asks, and assuming he was sleepwalking at the time, would he have the capacity to intend? And Billing says no. And the lawyer says, would he have appreciated what he was doing? And Billing says, no, he would not. And the lawyer says, 
would he have understood the consequences of what he was doing? And Billing says, no, I do not believe that he would. I think it would all have been an unconscious activity, uncontrolled and unmeditated. So what would your opinion be if you were a juror on this case? Does sleepwalking sound like an excuse? Is one either asleep or awake? Or can a brain be caught between those two states? So in today's podcast, we're going to explore the fundamental differences between the states of wakefulness and sleep. We'll look at the purpose of sleep and the way that transitions between sleep and wakefulness can go awry. And then, armed with our new knowledge, we'll return to the Parks case at the end of this episode to see what the jury concluded. <laughs> 